Hey guys, so I'm gonna ask you to give me a thumbs up if you like this video and also subscribe so you can see my next videos and watch my journey for the summer shredding contest. Plus it really helps me out, so thanks. Thanks in advance, thanks. Hey guys, welcome back. So I got a different video, different kind of video for you today. Um, it's kind of just an informative one, so I'm pretty much just sitting in front of the camera yakking. And it might be a little bit boring, but it's stuff you need to know. So sit your butt down and get ready to take some notes. So the question, do calories matter? The answer, yes they do. Calories do matter. And anyone tells you that they don't matter doesn't know what they're talking about. I know there's like a big trend going on in the fitness industry. There's the latest fads. There's like all these diets that you can do. And everyone just claims how great they work. But in the end, calories matter. For example, the no carb diet. So you cut out all carbs and all you can eat is protein and fats. And then all of a sudden you're miraculously losing tons of weight. Now... There's like tons of studies that prove that in that it just comes down to calories in versus calories out, energy balance. But just think about this. So you cut out all carbs. Think about all the foods you cannot eat any longer. Processed crap, chips, like all cake, anything that you want to eat that's probably real good, you can't have. Back to just proteins and fats and vegetables basically. Can't even have fruit and it really really limits the amount of foods you can eat so obviously it's going to cut back on how many calories you have you can eat chicken and broccoli i mean who wants to eat that all day long you know what i'm saying then we have the paleo diet now i'm not saying like it's not good to be on the paleo diet um if you don't know what paleo diet is it's like the hunter gatherer so basically anything you can hunt or gather no grains like no corn, like modern farming stuff, no, no. With the paleo diet, but again, you're cutting out a ton of foods and so your calories are again getting low, lower. The things like chips and cake and all that, like let's say if you're eating chips and a serving size is 10 chips, like I don't know about you, but I never eat just 10 chips. So then you end up eating more and more and more calories, right? And that's how it all works. So let's talk about macros. Okay, so macros is a popular thing because you can, if it fits your macros diet, and you can pretty much eat things that you wouldn't be able to eat, let's say on certain other diets, like you can still make room for chips or protein pancakes with chocolate chips in them, which I do often, recipe in this video and things like that. So break it down is protein, carbs, and fats. Got some notes on my phone here. This is actually from my blog. Protein has four grams, carbs have four grams, and fats have nine. Obviously fats are way, way, way higher when it comes to calories because it's more than double what proteins or carbs are. This is why I like to do a higher protein, high carb, lower to medium fat range because I get to eat more food and I like carbs, who doesn't, right? Basically is find a calculator, the Catch McCurl calculator, or I'll link one in here, it's on Katie Hearn Fitness. Um, it's a calculator, you just put like your height, your weight, your age, your gender, and a couple factors, and then it figures out what your BMR is, and also can figure out your macros exactly for you. So based on activity level and your BMR, it'll tell you how many calories you need, how many grams of protein, how many grams of carbs and fats. So it's gonna recommend that you probably have at least one gram of protein per pound of body weight. There's a bunch of different studies and that usually is about where you need to be most people. Person, it's what I do. I just do one pound or one gram per pound of body weight for myself. Right now I'm on 145 carb, 145 protein, and 56 grams of fat, roughly. I'm sure if I go over a little bit on some area, then it's okay, like I'm not obsessed about numbers, but you wanna hit your numbers pretty close every single day. So let's be done with the boring stuff. Just kidding. 
I know, like it's probably kind of boring listening to me talk about stuff like that, but it's things that people need to know, so maybe you just do, you do want to hear about it. Hopefully. I'm just going to tell you now, you're going to find that it's really difficult to meet your protein needs, especially when you're needing your body weight in protein. It's... It's hard without protein shakes. Like I used to do it with just trying to eat like food and stuff like that and it's just hard to do. One, because you're always cooking and it's just a lot of meat to have and it gets expensive. So protein shakes, boom. I'll try to show you right now how I make a protein shake and how I make it taste the bomb. So here's what we do. You get your shaker, your protein. I like chocolate. This is muscle tech. Whey protein isolate. It's got 32 grams of protein per serving. And there's no artificial sweeteners or flavors or colors. Which I'm all about. I'm all about that. So then I also really love mixing it with this PB Fit. And that adds another 6 grams of protein. And I just put it in the shaker with water. I do about six to eight ounces of water shake it up then i put mine in the freezer and i let it chill because it has to be cold otherwise it's just not good and then swig that down it'll keep you full forever not forever but for a very long time is a peanut butter sandwich with a protein shake like that i had that for lunch today and it's 4 30 i had that at like one o'clock and i'm still super full and usually I'm like starving by now, so it's a good one. It's a good meal. Even though I'm cutting back on bread, so I'm only having stuff like that like once in once a couple times a week or whatever. But anyways, it's, it's just uh, something that keeps you full. A good meal, quick meal idea. You always want to use whole wheat bread. Whole wheat all the way. Or sprouted just tried this bread and it's super good so it's old-fashioned sprouted non-gmo very minimal ingredients and this bread is like super soft which is like one of the main things i love about bread and so that's why i get it I think it's gonna be it for this video so comment um, if you like these if you try these protein pancakes I'm about to show you they're amazing um, I'll just place in the comments description area whatever the recipe and where I get where you can find this stuff and that's gonna be it so we'll see you next time